Our service of morning prayer begins on page 79 of the Book of Common Prayer. Thus says the High and Lofty One, who inhabits eternity, whose name is Holy. I dwell in the high and lofty place, and also with the one who has a contrite and humble spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble, and to revive the heart of the contrite. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Let all creation praise God. Come, let us worship. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before God's presence with thanksgiving and raise to God a shout with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great ruler above all gods. In God's hands are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are God's also. The sea is God's for God made it and God's hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker. For God is our God and we are the people of God's pasture and the sheep of God's hand, for well, that today you would hearken to God's voice. Let all creation praise God. Come, let us worship. Psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 89, verses 1 through 18. Beginning on page 713 of the Book of Common Prayer. Worship God in the beauty of holiness. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. From age to age my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. For I am persuaded that your love is established forever, and you have set your faithfulness firmly in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever, and preserve your throne for all generations. The heavens bear witness to your wonders, O Lord and to your faithfulness in the assembly of the Holy Ones. For who in the skies can be compared to the Lord? Who is like the Lord among the gods? God is much to be feared in the council of the Holy Ones, great and terrible to all those round about him. Who is like you, Lord God of hosts? Almighty Lord, your faithfulness is all around you. You roll the raging of the sea and still the surging of its waves. You have crushed Rahab of the deep with a deadly wound. You have scattered your enemies with your mighty arm. Yours are the heavens, the earth is also yours. You laid the foundations of the world and all that is in it. 
You have made the north and the south. Dabor and Hermon rejoice in your name. You have a mighty arm. Strong is your right hand and high is your right hand. Righteousness and justice are the foundations of your throne. Love and truth go before your face. Happy are the people who know the festal shout. They walk, O Lord, in the light of your presence. They rejoice daily in your name. They are jubilant in your righteousness. For you are the glory of their strength. And by your favor our might is exalted. Truly, the Lord is our ruler. The Holy One of Israel is our King. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Worship God in the beauty of holiness. A reading from the book of Habakkuk. The oracle that the prophet Habakkuk saw. O Lord, how long shall I cry for help and you will not listen? Or cry to you violence and you will not save? Why do you make me see wrongdoing and look at trouble? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. So the law becomes slack and justice never prevails. The wicked surround the righteous, therefore judgment comes forth perverted. Look at the nations and see, be astonished, be astounded, for a work is being done in your days that you would not believe if you were told. For I am rousing the Chaldeans, that fierce and impetuous nation, who march through the breadth of the earth to seize dwellings not their own. Dread and fearsome are they, their justice and dignity proceed from their selves. Their horses are swifter than leopards, more menacing than wolves at dusk. Their horses charge. The horsemen come from far away. They fly like an eagle swift to devour. They all come for violence, with faces pressing forward. They gather captives like sand. At kings they scoff, and at rulers they make sport. They laugh at every fortress and heap up earth to take it. Then they sweep by like the wind. They transgress and become guilty. Their own might is their god. Are you not from of old? O Lord, my God, my Holy One, you shall not die. O Lord, you have marked them for judgment, and you, O Rock, have established them for punishment. Your eyes are too pure to behold evil, and you cannot look on wrongdoing. Why do you look on the treacherous and are silent when the wicked swallow those more righteous than they? You have made people like the fish of the sea, like crawling things that have no ruler. The enemy brings all of them up with a hook. He drags them out with his net. He gathers them in his sin, so he rejoices and exults. Therefore he sacrifices to his net and makes offerings to his sin, for by them his portion is lavish and his food is rich. Is he then to keep on emptying his net and destroying nations without mercy? I will stand at my watch post and station myself on the rampart, I will keep watch to see what he will say to me and what he will answer concerning my complaint. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision. Make it plain on tablet so that a runner may read it. For there is still a vision for the appointed time. It speaks of the end and does not lie. If it seems to tarry, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. Look at the proud. Their spirit is not right in them, but the righteous live by faith. Moreover, wealth is treacherous, the arrogant do not endure. They open their throats wide as shale, like death, they never have enough. They gather all nations for themselves and collect all peoples as their own. Shall not everyone taunt such people and with mocking riddles say about them, Alas for you who heap up what is not your own, how long will you load yourselves with goods taken in pledge? Will not your own creditors suddenly rise and those who make you tremble wake up? then you will be booty for them. Because you have plundered many nations, all that survive of the peoples shall plunder you. Because of human bloodshed and violence to the earth, to cities and all who live in them, 
Alas, for you who get evil gain for your houses, setting your nest on high to be safe from the reach of harm. You have devised shame for your house by cutting off many peoples. You have forfeited your life. The very stones will cry out from the wall and the plaster will respond from the woodwork. Alas, for you who built a town by bloodshed and found a city on iniquity. Is it not from the Lord of hosts that people labor only to feed their flames and nations weary themselves for nothing? But the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Alas, for you who make your neighbors drink, pouring out your wrath until they are drunk in order to gaze on their nakedness. You will be sated with contempt instead of glory. Drink your, you yourself and stagger. The cup in the Lord's right hand will come around to you and shame will come upon your glory. For the violence done to Lebanon will overwhelm you. The destruction of the animals will terrify you because of human bloodshed and violence to the earth, to cities and all who live in them. What use is an idol? Once its maker has shaped it, a cast image, a teacher of lies. For its maker trusts in what has been made, that the product is only an idol that cannot speak. Alas for you who say to the wood, wake up, to silent stone, rouse yourself. Can it teach? See, it is plated with gold and silver, and there is no breath in it at all. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Here ends the reading. Let us pray together Canticle 8, on page 85 of the Book of Common Prayer. I will sing to the Lord, for he is lofty and uplifted. The horse and its rider has he hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my refuge. The Lord has become my Savior. This is my God, and I will praise him, the God of my people, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a mighty warrior, Yahweh is his name. The chariots of Pharaoh and his army has he hurled into the sea. The finest of those who bear armor have been drowned in the Red Sea. The fathomless deep has overwhelmed them. They sank into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in might. Your right hand, O Lord, has overthrown the enemy. Who can be compared with you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, awesome in renown, and worker of wonders? You stretched forth your right hand. The earth swallowed them up. With your constant love, you led the people you redeemed. With your right hand, you brought them in safety to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them on the mount of your possession. The resting place you have made for yourself, O Lord, the sanctuary, O Lord, that your hand has established. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the letter of James. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without works and I by my works will show you my faith. You believe that God is one, you do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. Do you want to be shown, you senseless person, that faith without works is barren? Was not our ancestor Abraham justified by works when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that faith was active along with his works and faith brought to completion by the works. Thus the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God and it was reckoned to him as righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. You see that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. Likewise, was not Rahab the prostitute also justified by works when she welcomed the messengers and sent them out by another road? For just as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is also dead. 
There ends the reading. Let's pray together, Canticle 13, Benedictus S. Domine, on page 90 of the Book of Common Prayer. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple, on the throne of your majesty. Glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depths and the high vault of heaven. Glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. A reading from the Gospel of Luke. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus covered with sores who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner evil things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us is a great chasm. It has been fixed, so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. He said, Then, Father, I beg you to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them, so that they will not also come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said, No, Father, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to them, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. Here ends the reading. Pray together, Canticle 18, Deneus S, beginning on page 93 of the Book of Common Prayer. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God, for you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with your blood you have redeemed for God from every family, language, people, and nation a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor forever and forevermore. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who 
sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. God, you called your servant Margaret to an earthly throne that she might advance your heavenly kingdom and gave her zeal for your church and love for your people. Mercifully grant that we who commemorate her this day may be fruitful in good works and attain to the glorious crown of your saints through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin or be overcome by any adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Dear God, we pray for your holy church, for all who minister in her. We pray for all bishops, priests, deacons, pastors, parsons, all lay people leading services at this time. We pray for all the nations of this world, and we pray for those in authority. May they be guided to just and moral decisions through your love and your wisdom. We pray for the poor, the sick, the homeless, the hungry, the needy. We pray for those in prison. We pray for the unemployed and those suffering from financial insecurity. We pray for all those suffering from COVID-19 and all concerned about it. We pray to you for the souls of all the departed. We pray for all who have passed away from COVID-19. We pray for all who have died, been killed, been murdered, been executed because of racial bias, bigotry, hatred, or indifference. Pray for those in our community here whose lives have been lost. And we pray that you comfort all those who mourn. Dear God, we pray for the needs and concerns of our community here. We pray for Polly, Shirley, Shawnee, the Harris family, the Altamoros y Avilas, the Elos, Zendejas, Fran, Minas, Death. Father Gunda Marks, Jim and his family, Gregory, Lola, B, Conco Timothy, Azrael, Beth, Kay, Jerome, Mormons, Roger and his wife, baby Isla, Mackenzie, Dreamers, Ian, Lola Carmelita, Ninon Rose, Abigail, Len, Malia, Sierra, Isaiah, and Josh. We pray for those suffering from addiction. May they be able to maintain their sobriety in these anxious times. We pray for those estranged from family, loved ones. May the love of Christ join them together. We pray that through the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we may, in Christian love, come together in kindness and gratitude and form a time of rebirth and recovery. And dear God, we give you thanks for all the blessings of this life, for each and everything you do for us every single day. We thank you for our community here at All Saints. 
For our Interim Rector Beth, our Music Director Bill, our Office Administrator Augustine, we give thanks for our lay leadership. We give thanks for this beautiful space in which to worship and our rectory. We pray to you for our search committee. They may find the correct next rector for this community. Thank you for our Saturday morning food program and the San Francisco Health Care Home and pray that our ministries there may begin again soon. Most of all, great God, we give you thanks for this wonderful, marvelous gift of creation. May we become faithful stewards of this great gift. For whom and for what else shall we pray? Let us join together all our prayers in the general thanksgiving found on page 101 of the Book of Common Prayer. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore.